Hello, my name is John Hewitt. I work for Planet. I work with communities on digital projects. My talk's all about engagement, how archaeologists can engage with the public, particularly in this time of restrictions and lockdowns. I was lucky enough to work with the National Museum of Wales on the excavation of the Iron Age chariot last year, 2019. Around about March, uh, we arrived at the site with a group of students from Pembrokeshire College, and it was their task to film the excavation, talk to the volunteers, talk to the archaeologists, and make a short film about about the excavation of the chariot itself and then follow it through to talk to some people about the conservation process um, at places like the Welding Institute and then on to the National Museum site in St Fagans and Central Cardiff as well. That went well, it was very interesting. Uh, the young people were um, fascinated with uh, the whole process and actually gave a presentation of um, the work from March 2019 through to October of the same year at Archaeology Day in the Merlin Theatre last year. In the original funding bid, the National Museum of Wales uh, were going to finish off uh, the engagement uh, with the public um, on the findings um, that they had produced as part of this excavation and conservation through the medium of um, a drama, um, working with um, small theatre groups, local theatre groups to produce something that would show their interpretations of the site in an accessible way. Now, of course, that couldn't happen. It became very obvious that that wasn't going to happen March, April time of this year, 2020. And so we were thinking about different ways in which we could uh, make those findings accessible to people, but then also um, to fulfil the engagement part of the original bid. So a small subgroup was created uh, from the original um, Amgia the Cymru uh, chariot project group and this was just to do with the engagement. And it was decided that we would make um, an online resource. In fact, what I wanted to do was to make something akin to going to a glass cabinet at St Fagans and seeing the artefacts there and having that same sense of wonder um, as to what was going on. And yes, there would be expert information by the side, but the gut feeling, the real engagement, would be um, the person standing in front of that artefact and how they react to it. I wanted to try and recreate that with this online resource. Right. Uh, I've gone for a very simple look on purpose. It's not a standard website in that um, there's no beginning, middle and end to it. Um, I wanted people who were using this resource to start to think a bit like an archaeologist. Um, I wanted them to discover and to dip in and out of the different articles um, at their own at, according to their own interest and their own their own whim um, to get their own sort of um, results out of it. So I've been careful not to impose any interpretation or analysis uh, from experts on here. The uh, each one of these uh, articles um, will, if you click on it, will take you into either uh, a. So this is a very particular kind of late Iron Age sword. A short video, uh, which has got subtitles on it. Um, there is a small description underneath just saying what's what's in the video. Each video um, is no longer than two minutes. This one's a minute and a half. 
You could some of the articles, though. For example, this one. Uh, this one came uh, from David Archaeological Trust, and it's a description of a technical drawing that was made after the uh, the excavation. And this is a technical drawing, actually, of two two of the tyres uh, in in their pits. Uh, I've recorded ke uh, Ken. This is a drawing or drawings of the two chariot wheels elevations of. And also included a transcript of what he says in there. Um, so it's just the drawing and um, and Ken describing it. The third type of article is this one. Now this one came from uh, Dr. Melanie Giles from University of Manchester, and it's actually from a fact sheet. Uh, on Iron Age chariots. Um, so she describes in a very engaging popular science type of way uh, about, um, about chariots and different chariot excavations around the country um, that uh, and and some of their sort of ideas of what they might have been used for. This is as close to interpretation as I get. Um, you can notice on here, on each one of these, that there are some blue uh, keywords. And these are important. This is as much structure as I've got in here. So, for example, you can click on one of these topics and you can, and these are the different topics in there. There is going to be a fourth one, which is going to be about um, technical skill required as well. So, for example, you could choose something like excavation, and you will get all the articles relating to the excavation. Or you could, you don't have to go into that one there, you could click on conservation here, and you, again, you get all the uh, the items, all the articles to do with conservation. Of course, this is bilingual, so there is a Welsh site, exactly the same. Um, so, for example, we'll go into one of these for Ken's. Now, um, again, Ken's talking about this post-excavation um, technical drawing. I still have uh, Ken describing it. Yeah, so what you see here is a plan we, we made or compiled. Now, of course, when I recorded Ken, he was speaking in English, um, but I've had it translated. So on the Welsh site, there is um, a transcript of what Ken says in Welsh. Um, and it's been important to have everything as close to... Um, they mirror each other. On here, we have... Now, here's Mike Smith. He's the finder. And we have the title and a slight sort of intro, a small introduction here. The benefit of going into the, in the ploughed fields or deep ploughed fields is... So, of course, um, Mike is talking in English, uh, but we've got Welsh subtitles on this one. The most important thing um, that I've got on here, to my mind, is that this, this menu item called What Do You Think? Now, I'm aiming this mainly... Uh, th this is for maybe use in schools um, or colleges where you could think they've got some very simple questions, simple to ask, um, but really hard to uh, to answer. Um, so just a simple one, who was buried in the ground? The ultimate answer is they, they don't know. The, archeolo the archaeologists don't know, but um, you can think about maybe the, the, there was a sword there, um, some of the other... Um, uh, finds that that were buried in the vicinity um, and then looking at the excavation as a whole. Um, when was this chariot used? Again, there was no carbon dating at the time um, of the excavation, but you can talk about in comparison with other chariots, uh, the, uh, the chariot wheels that were made, and again, some of the ditches and some of the finds that were made in the ditches. I've wanted, again, to get the people who are using this resource 
to think, to think about, to come up with their own interpretations, but also underline without spelling it out to say that there is no hard and fast answer. It's always a best estimation as to what uh, what they think is going on there um, in the light of other excavations and other finds. Now, of course, the uh, the whole point of this resource is engagement. It's being able to uh, talk about the um, the, fi- the excavation, the conservation, and the finds that were made um, outside of the uh, the National Museum. Now, this can be to engage the public, but it is also it's something that can be used to prove engagement uh, to funders. Um, So we're kind of hoping that this is something that uh, could be used to build on, on which to build bids for future uh, for future funding. So we've got the organisations who, who are involved with making the resource, um, but then also different groups that have been involved with the development of this um, of this resource in itself. Um, there is evid- I've got evidence that uh, from feedback from different people that, uh, that, that they have used that. Um, but also this just by having it here within the resource shows that engagement is, is, um, is part of the actual resource in itself. Finally, I've developed the resource as it is because it's, I'm hoping that it will never be finished. It's quite straightforward to add another article. Um, you can just put another one in. Every, all the other cards will just shift along um, to make way for the new card. So as there are new findings or new interpretations um, or even just comparisons uh, with with n- other uh, um, excavations, um, they can be added just to add to the whole interpretation of the actual excavation in itself. So you see, that's what we've got so far. It's not open to um, the public just yet. Uh, because it is part of the National Museum of Wales's re- online resources. And of course, it has to be seen to reach certain standards um, before it can be made public. Standards such as um, the Welsh translations. Do they fit with all the other artefacts that they have online? Um, it is going through that process at the moment. So at the time that I am filming now, it is not public, um, but it will be, it will be. The nice thing about it is that uh, we ha- it hadn't been planned to make such a thing. Like today, like this archaeology day, um, it's different to how it was last year. Um, we can't have engagement in the way that we did in 2019. We can't have the Merlin Theatre with people sitting by, side by side um, and have the experts up there on stage um, just metres away and you can fire questions at them. But I think from this adversity, from this lockdown, Um, some good things have come out. I wouldn't have made this resource, it wouldn't have been there, and I think we've actually got something that could be very useful for engaging with local history groups, but certainly with school schools. Um, In from prime, right from the start, the primary schools in the local area, some of the secondary schools in the local area, and the college have been involved in the process um, of developing this resource. The college has been there from the beginning in that they took the, the videos and it was them that made the interviews. After that, I have spoken to some of the local uh, primary schools to see how would you use it? How, w- how would you use it with year five, for example, in the classroom? Um, and then in the secondary schools, how would, how would a secondary school use this uh, with the new curriculum coming in? So although this wasn't planned those years ago when the bid was made, I think something has 
very useful and something quite special has come out of it. And likewise, with today, with the Archaeology Day, we don't know how it's going to go. We don't know um, whether it's going to uh, run smoothly or we're going to have little hiccups on the way, but it is something new and hopefully something lasting may come out of this. I'm not saying this is going to replace everything, it's, um, the resource isn't going to replace the glass cabinets and it's certainly not going to replace St Fagans. And today is not going to replace Archaeology Day as it was in the past. But we are learning some new things and we are learning what new ways in which um, the public and the academics and the scientists can engage with each other. Um, and it's interesting, it's, there are interesting times ahead.